This is, that woman is actually a, a famous actress, an old woman. She was a famous actress in England, and she thought it would be funny for the first movie, although she didn't know it was the first movie, to walk backwards. So you're seeing the back of her head. That's why she looks like she's kind of going like this. And the woman in the middle is the fiance, of the, the, the young man who's walking the furthest. He's the son of the cinematographer. The girl is his fiance. The guy, the old man back there, I'm not here, sure, sure who, who that is. Now, part of what's interesting about this is 10 days after this was shot, the woman who's walking backwards is dead. I don't know what of exactly, but she was dead. So it's interesting that the, her, her, she has the most interesting movement, the first ever captured on motion picture, and was just at the very end of her life. But the real mystery about this whole story, and actually someone should make a movie about this, is this man, Louis Le Prince, had, had copywritten this, uh, or re rather got a patent on this process, and was heading to New York to show it to people in New York and to license it and so forth, and he mysteriously disappeared and was never found again, ever. And they don't know if he was murdered or what happened. He was literally changing trains, trains in France and disappeared. This is fascinating to me, but I can see you guys. It's like, okay, let's come on, how we raise money for this. <laughs> All right, okay. So we went from that to, to where we are now. But first of all, I want to hear feedback from you about what is a feature film. Let's try to define what a feature film is, and we're going to talk about feature films, because that's what everyone wants to be making, right? Um, who wants to shout out something? More than 60 minutes. More than 60 minutes, okay. Well, I mean, okay, we, it's, it's long. I would say, I would say, what did you say? Something you can sell. Yeah, something you can sell takes so I would say uh, the 60 minutes is actually probably a, a decent time. What, what, what about in, more in terms of content or conceptually? It, is a, uh, does it have to have actors and dialogue? And, Okay, it, it, uh, it has to have a story. Maybe it doesn't have to have a story. I saw a, uh, I was at the uh, Dance Camera West Film Festival last weekend in Los Angeles, which is just dance films, which don't get hardly any exposure at all. And I saw, does anyone know who Mike Figgis is? Who <coughs> lived in Las Vegas, is his most famous film. He did this film uh, called The Cotelette Film, which was basically the filming of a dance uh, it was just a dance on a stage, just music and people moving. There was no story. It's an hour. It's it's a feature film, length film. It's really controversial and, and uh, kind of mind blowing. But that's a feature film. So I would say uh, it does. Uh, to me, a traditional narrative is not necessarily uh, part of it. Now the reason I'm asking these kind of basic questions is that often new filmmakers get stuck in the rut of what they see at the multiplex. And we're trying to be make independent film artists not to do terminate, uh, 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 Transformers 3, right? If you want to be in that big, giant studio, Transformers 3, Harry Potter business, going the independent route is not the way to get here. Trust me, okay? My, my career is, is uh, The best thing to do is to get in your car, go to Hollywood, try to get a job working for someone, work your way up the ladder, do it the traditional way. If you're an independent filmmaker, you have other things driving you in terms of why you want to be a filmmaker. Okay? So they're very two different worlds. And um, a lot of people, and I was one of these people, thought, well, I kind of move up like, like in baseball. Okay? I play Little League, and I play high school baseball, and then then I, maybe I get to play college baseball, and then I go to single A, and I go to trip double A and triple A, and then I go to the major leagues. But filmmaking isn't like that. It's a, it, independent filmmaking is a course that, that does not lead to studio movies, except in very, very, I mean, you know, the Coen brothers, very, very rare situations. But I don't think that, they, their experience was started, you know, 30 years ago. So I don't think, so just be aware that it doesn't work like that. Scott, are you doing it or I'm doing it? 
Okay. I'm just going to say next. How about that? Okay. Next. Okay. So the micro budget feature was starting to define it. In Hollywood, basically, they refer, you can, go, you can keep going as I keep talking. Uh, the, generally, the definition is under $250,000. The unions are starting to recognize that there's a lot of business here. Screen Actors Guild has something called the micro budget feature contract, which is awesome. And we're going to talk about that later. And uh, it's awesome in that it, it you can sign on and be a SAG film for very little money. And that gives you access to uh, a wider range of actors. Uh, often most of these films are really shot for fifty to $150,000. Um, it's going to get worse here. Okay? Smart investors will not invest in them. Okay? Only dumb people or relatives. Okay? Or if you're a very attractive young lady, a, a rich man that you meet. You might be smart sometimes, but maybe not around. You can't pre sell these films, which is how a lot of independent films get made. You can't get stars to act in them. You can't get banks to loan money on them. You can't get a bond. Uh, a bond, a completion bond, is something that you go to a company for and you pay them. And they guarantee the film to get finished to the people that are putting money in. In other words, let's say you have an investor in the film. The investor says, you have to have a completion bond because I'm not giving you this money. Like for example, my film was uh, three, like $3.7 million. We also, and out of that money came money for a completion bond, which is if I went crazy or became a drug addict or whatever, went nuts, they could come and take the film away from me and finish it on their own, so at least the investor has an asset to sell. Luckily, I didn't go crazy or drug addict. Uh, oh, and you will lose all your money. Okay, is that not clear to anyone? Uh, so why are you making this film? Next, Scott. So why are you making this film? Well, there's only reason is that you have to make it. Okay? So let's establish ourselves up to this point. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be fun all the time. It's going to cost you money. You're going to be begging for money from people for a long time. But uh, you have to make this film. Otherwise, if you don't have that kind of level of passion about doing it, I kind of almost re recommend that you don't because it's, it's almost worse to get a third of the way, halfway through something, and then just go, oh, well, I never got around. I mean, that's like you know an open sore that never heals. Right? So, so don't do that. Next. This is why we also want to make independent films. This is, this is Hollywood. I know this is actually 2007, but the one that comes out next week is no different. Okay. Movies are products, and they are hopefully brands now. Not just one, but many. Harry Potters and Transformers and Spider-Man. Okay. Next. All right. This is a little clip. Hold on. Don't push the button yet. It's a little clip from my film that has some of the. Um, just I'll give you a little hint of it. This will be the only clip I'm going to belabor you with. But uh, uh, this is the girl from L.A. And Brenda Fraser, you'll see, is the, the guy. Okay. You're just worrying about closing that Tomas kid. Forget it. You'll bring them. No, I keep having these dreams. I keep thinking about green. <gasps> ivy. I'm lying in some ivy, and I feel like a little girl. And I don't know what happens. It's probably nothing. I keep waking up with this, like, warm, peaceful feeling. And then I realize who I am and where I am, and it all runs away. Before I met Raul, I had a dream about a Persian and a Mercedes. <laughs> I don't know, there's every girl's fantasy. Now, Ross, don't knock it. He became my second husband for eight glorious months before we split under very lucrative terms. <sighs> Marrying them for their money seems so old-fashioned. Sometimes old-fashioned works. That's why it was in fashion for so long. But do you ever think you could, like, 
meet someone and fall in love and marry them for love? Oh God, Roz, really? It does happen. Have you ever known anyone to actually be in love for longer than 90 days? You, your mother, aunts, girls you grew up with, anyone, it's impossible. And perfectly good women attach themselves to pigs for an eternity on the basis of 90 days of hormonal imbalance. It's not that dark. Money, connections, real estate, gene pool, short life expectancy. Those might be reasons, not love. Uh, but don't you ever just wanna, I don't know, lose control? I just wanna meet a man who knows what he wants, not what you get him to want. Yeah, for a night, maybe a week. I would wear. Yeah, I guess. <sighs> What's wrong with you? Uh, I have to do that clothes tomorrow. Oh, for seven lousy bills, that doesn't last me a couple of months. You'll do fine. Are you sure you're feeling okay? I'm still breathing. That's all that matters. Now do good, and remember, they always deserve it. I do it sometimes. Um, 
Usually the people who do it are assistant directors or production managers who have a lot of experience. And then they take down the script and they do what's called break it down. Okay? How many props, how many locations, what time of days, how many actors, how many pages, blah, blah, blah. Then they schedule a film. This is the key thing. How many days does it take to make this film? Not how many days do you hope it, make, it takes, but how many days will it actually take? Uh, now, for when you get into the low budget world of say $150,000 to $250,000 or even less, usually a lot of these films are made in seven days straight because they get one week's rental out of all the equipment, one week up for this and that and the trucks and all that stuff, and they just cram the whole movie into seven days. I personally would rather shoot myself in the toe than do that because it seems insane, okay? Uh, then there's people that just do two six-day weeks or sometimes do 14 days straight in a, in a row. And then there's the non-traditional schedule. Now, non-traditional schedules are enabled by all this new, cheap, wonderful equipment which really lowers your cost down. I'm doing a micro, I'm developing a micro budget feature right now. I'm going to walk you through the process of, of how I'm doing that so far. And it's going to be a non-traditional schedule. In other words, we may shoot with the, the movie starts in Tijuana, Mexico, and ends at the very, very tip of Vancouver Island in British Columbia, where you have to walk 15 miles to get to this whole lighthouse. So we're going to shoot it in little bits here and there with a camera I own and a, a tiny, tiny little crew. And, and I might have to keep raising money during the process, but we're, the, what is happening with the micro-budget cinema now is that you're, as a filmmaker, you're starting to have the same freedom to make your movie that a novelist does to write a novel. Now, obviously, it's not that easy, because the, I'm not saying writing a novel is easy, but it only takes you sitting in front of a, uh, a keyboard, right? You still need more than one person to make a movie, but uh, it's going in that direction with that kind of creativity. Okay, okay next up. Yeah. Um, with my film Three Bales, what I did is I actually broke it up into three, uh, three weeks, mm -hmm. uh, over three months, three consecutive months. So, perfect example. Yeah, yeah so uh, because I, I knew I was going to get a lot of people volunteering or yeah. pay, and so I treated it as you know, some three different blocks. They can work for five, six, seven days, whatever. So that's great. They, they have the rest of the month to, to work. And okay. So, what you should do is talk to people for your business card around. Someone's going to do what you do. You did. Uh, I'd love to talk to you and see what not, what went right, what went wrong, and how to avoid that. Okay. So uh, the cost of doing this uh, this uh, budget and schedule is usually around fifteen hundred to three thousand dollars. So uh, I would plan on, on if you're you know I would plan on finding that money early on and getting that done professionally because it's going to pay so many dividends. Not only you're going to have a more accurate schedule and a budget, but it's going to impress all the people you talk to, to when you start to build your team. Okay, next slide. Okay, building the team. Now, obviously it starts with some combination of writer, director, producer. Um, I don't recommend anyone being all three of these. Okay, it's just don't recommend it. I'm not saying it's impossible. But let's say you're a writer, director. You, and you can still have a producer credit, but you really should have an experienced producer on there with you, okay? Uh, if you are a producer and want to make a movie and you're new, you really want to, and you have a, say you have a screenplay, maybe you wrote it or you got it from someone else, you really want a director that knows what he's doing then. You, it's best not to have two innocents abroad here at the very top level, because that's a recipe for a lot of mistakes happening. Now, the UPM or unit production manager Usually on a low-budget feature, the producer is also the unit production manager. In military terms, the unit production manager is like, like the chief master sergeant of the movie. They're the person that actually rolls up their sleeves and gets all, all, takes all, handles all the crap and makes sure things get done. People get paid and the crew doesn't walk off the set because they pissed off at lunch or whatever happened. Okay? So, so usually the producer is the unit production manager. If, if, if for some reason you on that first level you've got all newbies, definitely for sure, absolutely, positively hire uh, an experienced unit production manager. How do I do that in San Antonio? Well, you have to tap into probably Austin because there's a lot more experience out there. Uh, okay, next. 
assistant director is another person you do not want someone new doing this job. The assistant director runs the set. They keep the set moving along and all the things happening, okay? And keep going. Director of photography, we can talk about that for a long time, but we're not going to. Sound mixer, a lot of people don't think much about. Sound is absolutely key to a film singing professional, so make sure you've got experience, experience sound mixer. Uh, and same goes for editor. And uh, can you go back? Just run through that whole list. Really, that's the core of what it takes to make a movie. Okay? Because you don't necessarily have to have a, a gaffer and electrician. I mean, if you're shooting mainly natural light and, and reflector boards and a little bit of fill light here and there, these are the people that you, it, it, it takes to take a movie. And some, obviously, people can, a lot of these jobs can be the same person. Like uh, the famous uh, director, uh, Fred Weissman, the documentary director, he always had a cameraman, and he was the sound man and director. So when he went into a high school or a hospital or wherever, it was just those two guys. Okay. Um, anyway, the director obviously could be the editor. All of that's not always recommended either. Um, it's great to have another person. Okay, so let's talk about crowdfunding. I think the way to talk about it, go ahead and go to the next one. First of all, does anyone know what crowdfunding is? Anyone want to find it? Stop talking. Yeah, well, the idea is it's a crowd, and it's funding it. It's, 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 it's uh, facilitated online. The word investor actually is not part of it. Anytime you have someone invest in your movie, you go ahead and go through this. I'll, I'll stick with it. Um, some people call this gifted funding. Some people call it pre-sale funding. Because essentially you're pre-selling your DVD, for example. Uh, so imagine, well, I'll get into it. Some people call it gifted funding. I was at a seminar a couple weeks ago in Hollywood and these lawyers were saying, oh, it's just gifted funding. But you know, really, people were actually, in many cases, pre-buying the DVD, trusting you you're going to make the movie over how many, whatever, years or months. And uh, they may get a special version of that DVD or something that no one else has as, as a reward for being so early in the process. The key thing about crowdfunding that makes people like me get really excited, because I've gone through the legal uh, process of raising money. Usually, if you raise, my last film was one investor. Still, we had like $60,000 in legal fees. So I could take money from one investor and make a movie with it. Okay, $60,000. It's called a private placement memorandum. And, um, it's because there's this giant uh, bulk of securities laws. Anytime you take money from someone as an investment, you, you fall under these securities laws, and it's very, very complicated. So this bypasses all of that. <coughs> you really have to have a strong network, and you have to work your ass off begging constantly to get people to put money into this stuff. That's the downside of it. And it may feel really bad and really cheesy. But you have to have a network and you have to work on it. A lot of these uh, these uh, crowdfunding pictures that are easily funded are very niche oriented. Like say, people that like uh, Shetland ponies. You're going to do a documentary on Shetland ponies, or people that are are really into um, you know some uh, human rights issue in Guatemala or something like that. So you have if you're able to, through the internet, of course, is able to create these communities of people that are interested in these different things. And then you tap into that. And so that's often a, a form of success on this. Next. So I'm doing a film right now. It was called this. I, I found that, uh, hi, I'm making a movie called Lying Bitch. Uh, <laughs> Lying Bitch is what it's called. No, it's Lying Bitch. Uh, I thought, you know what, I'm going to change the name. And because I, and, I thought Lying Bitch was a great film festival title, frankly. And uh, so right now it's not called Lying Bitch. Go to the next slide. It's called an Actress. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, so it's going to be called Actress through the whole production process. And what Actress is, is a, uh, I, I spent, you know, I, I knew I wanted to make, because I have these other projects I'm doing that, you know, big, big, bigger movies, and are trying to do. And but I, I wanted to make a film I could just do on my own, 
which is why I'm giving a seminar, because this is exactly what the world I've been living in recently. And um, so I wanted to create a project that fit the kind of movie, because I've seen a lot of these little independent films, and some, most of them are really, really bad and really hard to watch. Pro mainly because they're, people are overreaching within the bounds of what they're trying to do and within their experience. So I thought, what if I have a movie where there's only, only one cast person, there's only one professional actor, and, and everyone else, it's a mixture of a scripted drama and a documentary. So the story is there's this one actress who is of a certain age, she was, and we, I haven't cast her yet, she's gonna be someone that hopefully people know. And maybe she was in a TV series or something and now she's kind of uh, trending towards 40 and um, she's very unhappy because she's not able to work, and that's all she knows. That's the only time she feels alive is when she's acting. So she's, she's in a job, a kind of commercial thing she's doing in Tijuana. She kind of freaks out, and she decides just to meld her art, or who she is as an artist, in with her real life. As actors generally have to sit around and wait until someone hires them to be in a play or be in a movie, and then they, quote, get to act. Otherwise, they go to acting class or things like that. But she thinks, why don't I just go, go from place to place in this giant road trip until I run out of road, and every place I stop, I'm gonna stop and stay for a while in, in each place, and I'm gonna create my own character and create my own story, and I'm gonna, I don't have to have anyone watching me. I don't have to be hired to do this. I'm gonna do what I do as an actor.